Ginger. I made mistakes. And a lot of enemies. His call signs Taskmaster. He controls the Red Room. Just dive right into Black Widow. Okay. Uh, this is, of course, like we said, Marvel Studios, Black Widow. 2021 got delayed a year because of COVID. But that's okay. We finally got to see it. Yeah, uh, directed by Kate Shortland, starring Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff, Florence Pugh as Yelena Belova, David Harbour as Alexei Shostakov, mm-hmm. Rachel Weiss as Melina Vostokov. Mm-hmm. Ray, is this Ray Winstone or Winston? Winstone. Winstone. Okay. Ray Winstone as Drakov, mm-hmm. and O.T. Fagbenle as Mason. I had to look up how to say his name, and I just had, yeah, you actually say it. Oh, Fag okay. Benley. Okay. So, he said it that way on a Hulu video, so don't, don't, there you come, go. At, don't come at me. There you go. Uh, Jeffrey. Yes. This movie was about our hero, our Avenger. Yeah. Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. During the events of Captain America, Civil War. Yeah, like right after Civil War. In between Civil right War. Right before Infinity War. In Infinity War, when they're on the run. Yes. Because of the disagreement in the Sokovia Accords. Yeah. You guys have seen Civil War. Yeah. It takes place right after Civil War. Natasha's on the run, gets dragged back into her former past, life. her former life, dealing with the Red Room, how she became a Black Widow, her fake family, family, yeah. and all that shit. That's general kind of little synopsis I'm going to throw out there. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, what did you think of the movie? I thought it was okay. I, th- I thought it, um, <sighs> I'm trying to think. I mean, I wrote a whole bunch. I have no, no notes. I have so many notes. Wow. I spent an hour today going back in my head because we saw it Thursday night. Yeah. We're recording this on Friday, so we decided we're going to do that. In the future, we're going to see the movies on Thursday nights, and then we're going to just talk about them here. gives us a little time to digest and think about it. Obviously, some of us think about things more than others. Um, <laughs> no, you'll, you'll find out why. All right, that's fine. Um, hey, oh, just a quick reminder, guys. Because this is a podcast and it's sort of like a more laid-back you know, <laughs> you're atmosphere, gonna hear. you're going to hear some drinking and eating. So <laughs> yeah. fucking deal with it. Yeah, yeah. too bad. Uh, although I forgot my drink, goddammit. I meant to get one before we got in Go here. Go get it. That's fine. I'll, I'll survive. Um, okay. I I enjoyed the movie. Okay. I do feel it's it's one of the slider Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Um, primarily because you know there are some Marvel movies that I would consider lesser tier because they are their quality is not as high. Yeah. Okay. And then there are some that I consider lesser tier because. They the story itself is just not as big. Yes. It's a smaller self contained story that if you plucked it out of the MCU, it would affect nothing. Correct. This is by design. We already know where Natasha ends up. So what we're trying to do is see, you know, get a little more of the history of where she came from that was given to us in Age of Ultron, right? And then expand on that a little bit, but then also shade in the rest of the people in the Black Widow Red Room program. Um, And then take that story and apply it broadly to discuss um, what I would consider to be female sex slavery and child kidnapping. I mean, it is. Oh, I know. Um, and like internalized sexism. Yeah. Um, and just like the experience and multi generational experience of being a woman. Yeah. Right? And going through trauma and how it affects you. That's really what this movie is about. Yeah. In, in the broader scheme. Um, and I, I, I'm fine with that. There are going to be some people out there who do not like that, that they they feel like this movie is using its broad, its big platform to sort of talk about an agenda. 
But every movie does that. There are going to be people who, there are going to be people who slam it for being ha- hashtag woke. Yes. Uh, who are generally just upset that like women are the star of anything. Right. <laughs> this movie. Well, I'll let you keep going, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I thought. No, it's fine. I mean, I think we've gotten to a point where. You know, I can say I enjoyed the movie for what it was. Okay. Um, I do think that some of the action scenes were pretty good. Mm-hmm. I actually did enjoy some of the action scenes, even though it, and I, I assume it's just because Kate Shortland chose to do this, but she did a lot of, especially like very close up handheld work. Mm-hmm. Um, not just during the fight scenes in general, but. Um, in the fight scenes specifically, which gave me that Paul Greengrass feel for like Born Supremacy and mm-hmm. all of his movies, which I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah. Like I like action to happen locked down, wide shots, um, go in close when you need to do something, but usually give it space to work. You don't have to make everything feel claustrophobic all the time. Mm-hmm. That's That's my biggest complaint about the action sequences. Okay. Otherwise, it's a movie about finding your place when you have no family of your own and trying to make a family. And that sometimes that doesn't work, Mm -hmm. you know, but that you can form connections with people that can be profound. Yeah. Um, And I thought it did that okay. Okay. It handled that a little a little better. Um, I've I've actually never seen any of other, uh, Kate Shortland's other movies. Uh, I, I know she did Lore, and I know she did um, what was it the Berlin Berlin Syndrome. Yeah, Lore sure. I've heard of, but I've I've never watched it. Um, but that's another like female driven film. Yeah, uh, which I would imagine is the reason she was picked for this. I know that Scarlett Johansson had a lot of sway in who they picked, and she wanted Kate Shortland. Yeah, I mean, there's not, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting a woman to no, direct not at all. a woman-centric. If, you're, if, centric. if this is the kind of story you want to tell... But I mean, even, even if this wasn't the, the, the story, I think having Black Widow be your lead character, it's like, I mean... Sure. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with getting a woman to No, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. To direct and I, and I think hero. she did fine. Yeah. Um, I think it was... Uh, I think it's just that Marvel does this. This they do this a lot. They pick like smaller indie directors mm-hmm. to make these big budget films, and more often than not, they do a good job. Yeah, I think the like, the directing is fine. I, like I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I found nothing really wrong with the director. With yeah. the direction. Um, okay. Well, let's talk about what you thought. Okay. So this should be interesting. Congratulations mm-hmm. to Black Widow. Okay. It is the first movie in quite a while, first movie of 2021, to perfectly land in what I call my Bermuda Triangle. Mm. I have no notes because I honestly couldn't remember half the movie. Jesus. I found it woefully uninteresting and boring and okay. and unnecessary. Well, yeah, it's unnecessary. We don't need it. Yeah, like, but it, it hit that. So, like, that's the thing. Like, I'm, and like, if I'm not, I don't know. Like, if I'm not passionately angry or, or you know, passionately like approving yeah, so of this, if you're film, not effusive I'm, of it, or yeah, if like, you're not I'm degrading. I'm gonna be kind of in the middle because, like, it just, I just it, don't care. It just exists. It exists. Yeah. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it. Okay. Um, okay. I, I mean that's I'm fine. A, I'm like I'm disappointed, but I'm not because like I knew exactly what I was gonna get from Black Widow. Yeah, we know. And at the end of the day, like so, spoilers for the movie. Yes. I mean, um, as well as really anything Marvel related, probably. At the end of the day, it's like I. This movie is a setup for the Hawkeye TV show and future Black Widows following Yelena. Yeah, and just like in a bridge between movies, really. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's real no, there's really no, there is nothing in this movie that, that like, 
connects to any of the other Marvel movies. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. So like it just connects to that Hawkeye show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that was just in the final scene. Yeah. Like the after that, credits scene. The sequence. actual after credits. Right. Which I do have to bring that up. So maybe this is a little bit of a passionate thing to kind of complain okay. about. It is after the long credits that they decide to show this scene, which they yeah. haven't done that in quite a while. Another example yeah. of sort of wasting my time that I wasn't a fan of. Sure. They did the like they did the um graphic credits at the beginning. Yeah. And like I thought they were fine. Like I Yeah. That's the thing, like this this whole movie was like fine. Like it was competently made. It's it's got some good action. It's yeah. got some you know, decent themes in there. Yeah. It just I mean it does. It just kinda like doesn't matter. <laughs> Of course it doesn't matter. At least to, that's, like, that's to me, saying. like I was just kind of like, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like I've seen it all before. Yeah. All of it. I've seen yes, it before. Yes, of course. And then something happened weirdly in this movie, which I guess we can either jump right into unless you have anything else you want to say before we start getting like... No, I mean, go ahead. Diving into that. Okay, I so... Can, whatever. There is a reveal in this movie. I'm just going to jump right to Taskmaster. Okay. There's a reveal in this movie that confused me to where I had to look it up today. So I look up a so I found a website who like that basically recounts the entire plot like beat for beat and they mm-hmm. get into all the spoilers and everything. Um but I had to like I had to confirm because I fucked up watching the movie. Okay. It's my fault, but it, it was like a weird happy accident. Okay. At the like near the beginning of the movie when she first meets her like sister, yeah, Florence Pugh's character, they run into each other and they're talking and after they've like fought each other in that room. They're talking for a moment about the Red Room, and Natasha's like, no, I've already, I took care of it. I took care of Dracov, whatever. And then she says, what about his daughter? Mm -hmm. Or she says something like that. My mind immediately went, oh, and I was like, that, I was like, okay, that's interesting. I literally thought she was telling us in that moment that Taskmaster is the daughter. So for the whole movie, I was like, I was like, that's kind of weird that they just, like, revealed that Taskmaster <laughs> is the daughter, like, that early on. And I was right. like, strange. And I was like, but then they never they never showed her face. So the whole movie, I'm like, who is it really? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Is it going to be Hawkeye? Is it going <laughs> to be so-and-so? I'm like, I'm, like my mind's kind of going, sure. I'm like, is it? And then for a moment, I was like, is it the other Captain America that we got in... Oh, Winner yes, in the yeah because I I knew that um what's her face was in this movie that she was like and of course she's in the fucking end credits but yeah. I, I I knew that she was in it so I was like I was like oh shit like what if it's the other and that's why he's got the shield and mm-hmm. my mind was going wild <laughs> they do the big reveal at the end and I was like oh yeah like it's gonna be someone crazy because they told us at the beginning that it's the daughter but then. They're right. keeping this helmet on her the entire time. They're not telling us. Now there's a big reveal. They take it off. It's the daughter. And I go, what the fuck? So like, I had to look it up. And I was like, oh, no, they didn't reveal it was the daughter. Yeah. She was just asking a question about her so, killing the daughter. Yes. <laughs> what she was doing was that was for us. Yeah. That was for us to understand that that, that was Natasha's like, regret was that she killed the daughter knowingly in yeah. order to kill the father. Yeah. Um, and that that was seeding that for us. But because of the way the lines were structured right. when when she was talking, it like sounded like a, it sounded like her sister telling her, yeah, yeah, you killed Drakov, but what about the daughter? Right. Like you didn't think about that. That's who's been attacking you. Mm. And I'm like, I was like, oh, that's weird that they just like revealed it. But I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they they didn't. I just fucking just so I knew the whole time it so, was Taskmaster. So and it like ruined thing. it for me. So this is this is the thing. <laughs> In that exact moment, yeah. As soon as she said, "What about the daughter?" Yeah, I also said, "Oh, the daughter is going to be Taskmaster." How could you not? Like, but it was because, and when we we talked about this before, when we t- talked about Black Widow mm. after the couple trailers that we got like last year, yeah. Um, I said I thought it was going to be the Rachel Vice character, yeah, who did turn out to be working with the Red Room still, yeah, until she turned. A double again against them. Yeah, so that the that was the only part that would, was kind of like a nice little twist. I yeah. was like, okay, yeah. like that one. I was like, and that f- played into the spy yeah. stuff, yeah. right? So, but that that was so my, going in, I was expecting it to be her mm-hmm. because I had already surmised in my head, and I, I know it's going to sound weird, but it's because the way that that character moves was female to me the entire time. 
Yeah, which is why when they said the daughter, I was like, I immediately bought it and into and it. I was just I like, said. yeah, and I was like, absolutely. Because we, I already knew also that Drakoff was not dead. So I figured yeah. then the daughter is not so, dead. Okay, so so that man, it's so <laughs> it's like we watch two different movies. So like, for me, the like the reveal that Drakov was alive in that floating castle, whatever, yeah. that was like a twist for me because I thought she said he was dead. No, see, and, but I knew, I, I just knew that yeah. she didn't end up killing him. She just thought she killed him. Yeah, and then that meant the daughter was still alive, and the daughter was now Taskmaster. Sure. The only reveal to me was that he was in the sky. <laughs> yeah, which 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 is an interesting place to set your base up. I don't, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Like that's uh, we. Uh. But yeah, but so like it makes sense though, because it's like like literally how you come to the same conclusion yeah. as I did is like yeah, like it it makes sense. It's just for me, I literally thought it was just told to me. Right. So I was like, oh, that's all right. Yeah. But I was like, I was fine with it because I thought no, I was, like it's fine. Because then when they revealed that Drakov was was there, like so the whole movie, I'm thinking like, okay, so Drakov really is dead, but the daughter took over and she's like, after, you know, right. re- revenge, whatever. I don't know, yeah. I, but no, and then like it was I like knew he no. wasn't dead. Yeah, I and knew he's like still alive, and I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, I just I knew he wasn't dead. But to me, I'm like, it doesn't really matter if he's dead or I don't know. I guess to me it didn't really matter because I'm like Taskmaster could have been the one running the whole thing. Sure, which I mean, which brings me to the point of Taskmaster, which I think was a was a very poor use of that character. Yeah, I mean, I like agree. I got I got major like Avengers one Hawkeye vibes of like you're just a puppet. Yeah, I mean, which, I mean they all were. They but all were puppets. That was the whole point. Yeah, and then they finally released her. It's just like such a badass looking character that like I I agree. It's a shame that like it was just like mindless. It's like his mindless daughter just Sure. Know, it just felt kind of But shitty. again, that folds into the th- I mean, think about it, okay? Taskmaster in the comics is a man. Mm. So they want to gender swap it. Yeah. And then it, we're talking about trauma. Not just trauma inflicted upon women, trauma inflicted upon women by this man. And not only the trauma to other women, his own daughter. But it was Natasha that... No, Natasha did that, but I, he then turned her into Taskmaster. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole message at the end is like when she's finally freed and Natasha says, I'm sorry, she doesn't even care. She just says, is he gone? Yeah, exactly, because he's been mind controlling her the entire time. Yeah, so I mean, she's... To, yeah, to me it was like I don't even hold a grudge against against you because the crime no. you committed is nothing c- compared to what he committed. Exactly. So it's like fine. Exactly. Yeah. And that, and that's what it's gonna come. That's what it comes down to for all of those women. Yeah. Is that he is the villain? He is the one that did all of this. No matter what they might have done. A, a, again, it wasn't even their choice. Yeah. Now you start to get. Th- that's for that generation. As you go back. A little bit, you get Natasha, who was not mind controlled because she was before that, and then you get Melina, who was long before that. Yeah. Right. But she still works with them. Yeah. So there's like still some type of control. Yeah, there's still some type of control. It's like an abusive, like domestic. Exactly. And that's like another thing that they're kind of like talking about. Sure. With this. Then there's the whole thing with the pheromones, which was. Yeah, I mean that was. An odd. So, <laughs> it, it's just it's it's like the typical like mad scientist thing. Yeah. Okay, Island of Doctor Moreau. It's yeah. the equivalent of him having that thing that will stop them in whatever they're doing. Sure, but like the the idea that it's pheromones, I thought. I, I, mean, was I agree. A, That's crazy. Interesting. But it, it's something that like it's unique to him. Yeah. And and again, it's like it's it's another form of sort of like I don't know intimacy. Yeah, it's that's like, what it is. It's, it's like an, forced intimacy. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a little element of like that sexual abuse in there as well. Exactly. Where you're like, mm. yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It just again, it makes him even more monstrous. Yeah. That that's what he uses to make sure that they can't kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Like the <laughs> like the thing that controls the thing he chooses to control them is his mojo. <laughs> like he's Austin Powers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree. That's silly. Crazy. <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. But, it's, you it's know, silly. for that kind of character, it probably makes sense. Yeah. 
It really does. You know, I've been I've been seeing very like uh, mixed reviews on this movie. Like, I, I it's a lot of people are upset that, about the Taskmaster reveal, the gender bending of that. Yeah, um, I don't think it matters. I don't think it does either. But we're not comic book people, no, so there's I, I'm not beholden to whatever comes yeah. in the comics. There's a lot of people, and I'm not going to discredit them. Like, if you're truly like a comic book no, that's fan, fine. and like you're, you're allowed to your opinion. Yeah. The people who are like, oh, I just hate it because like I wanted it to be a man and it's a woman, and it's like, yeah, shut it's up. Like, but that. like, if you if you genuinely if you like the comics, you expected certain things out of that character and it just didn't deliver, and sure. you you know whatever, and they made that choice, and you're kind of like, oh, that sucks. I can understand that. Like, I can understand the disappointment of that. Yeah. But, like, people seem to be kind of like either they really like this movie or they were kind of like in my camp where they're like, eh, like eh, just kind of like meh, like who cares? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of up there. Yeah. What's what is confusing to me though is the people who do like it are the type of people who make fun of like Fast and Furious. Sure. However, we have mind controlling pigs. Yeah. Controlling people with your pheromones. Yeah. And a floating castle in the sky. Yeah. So like come on. I I mean the stunts, I, I will say this. The stunts the performed thing, in this yeah. are are the stunts in Fast and Furious are no more ridiculous than the shit that was pulled in this. Yeah, except this is already set to be a fantastical type of world. Yeah. Okay? Fast and Furious is not. That's supposed to be a grounded in reality kind it of thing. It was never they have, supposed to be grounded yes, in reality. Is. No. Yes, it is. If you look at that first movie... Even that first movie is not grounded in reality. It's grounded in, in more reality than a Marvel movie is. Sure, but it's it still bends the laws of like physics and shit. Not as not as hard, not as, as, hard as F nine does. Sure, like F five is really where it like took off. Yeah, exactly. Of course, but like that's that's that is that franchise making a natural progression to something bigger, to something crazier. Yeah, uh, it's definitely them saying we're gonna go beyond. We're going Bond. Yes, which this had a nice little yeah Bond reference in it. Yeah. Which makes sense. I, I actually liked that because, number one, they went with Moonraker, which is the most ridiculous Bond. He also goes to space. Yeah. Um, Moonraker, yeah. yeah. But they, not only did they have that, they had her knowing the Bond dialogue. Yeah. Like, verbatim. Yeah. So my question is, does she only do that with Bond movies? Or does she do that with every spy movie? Does she watch every spy movie out there? And Probably. does she like memorize all the lines? It's or is it that Bond it, it, Moonraker is her favorite movie that she watches over and over and over again? It might be that. Because <laughs> I mean, it would be interesting to say that like someone who works in the spy field also loves watching spy stuff. Because you don't normally see that. Norm- the typical human behavior would be whatever your work is isn't what you want to stay away from as far as pleasure you know i mean i agree although there are a lot of people who love what they do exactly like i know like there are tons of like pro athletes Mm -hmm. that do nothing in their off time but watch other people in their sport that's all they do yeah that's true and some of it you could say yeah they're trying to scout out stuff but some of it is just they love watching it i'm coming at this from the perspective of like an accountant right (laughs) we're like typically yeah we wouldn't sit around and watch yeah, we're not going to watch people, people fill out spreadsheets ledger books and, and <laughs> stuff fill out like income that. statements and shit. We, we will watch The Accountant with uh, Ben Affleck. Hey, though. yeah. That was true. pretty cool. He yeah. made accounting look pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that's what I got to do. <laughs> if that's what I got to do every day, wow. I would love my job. Uh, I'd never leave. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe maybe she just she loves the... Well, but, but that's the thing. She doesn't love the life. Because like as we yeah. know of Natasha, it's always been something that she's sort of running from. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I so don't, it, I don't it, know if it's like... Yeah, it is strange that like Bond would be... Or like spy movies in general would be right. a thing that she... I don't know. I don't know either. I just thought it was a weird little touch. Or it was saying that... Or there was like a time jump we we hadn't seen really where she's been in that trailer for so long and that might be the only movie she has. And she's just been watching that over and I over mean, again. I mean, maybe, but she was only there one day. That generator died after six hours. That's right. She did say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that was just like that's the movie she chose to watch. Now, yes, you could say she only has one movie on her laptop. Yeah, you know, whatever. That's fine. I'm just saying, if it happened to be Moonraker, which yeah. she knows every line of dialogue for, or is that her favorite movie that she carries with her at all times? It's probably her favorite movie. It's probably her favorite movie. Could be. But I just thought it was mm. interesting. 
Yeah. I'm going to start with the opening of the movie. Mm-hmm. We get Ohio 1995. Uh-huh. We basically get the Marvel version of the show The Americans. Yes. Um, with the the little nuclear family. Um, but it's literally on their last day, <laughs> unbeknownst to most of them. They are about to have to leave as soon as possible because... So The Americans was all build up. Mm-hmm. It was all about, you know, the cat and mouse game. Sure. This is all the house is crumbling run. Yeah. And that's all we get. Um, we get a, a little bit of, you know, bonding with the sisters and how y- Yelena, you know, really looks up to Natasha. Um, Natasha seemed a little, like, annoyed with, with her. Yeah, but I think but just I, as you would with any little sister. Yeah, and then on top of that, like, not being a real sister. Yeah, and she knows she's not a real sister, yeah. right? So, like, Yelena doesn't really know that. Yeah. Because they said she was six. They had been doing it for three years, so she started when she was three. Like, she knew nothing. Yeah. That's all she ever knew. So she knew them as her parents and as her sister. Um, all right, so did you know who played young Natasha? Young Natasha. No. Okay. Um, her name is Ever Anderson. Her father is Paul W.S. Anderson. And her mother is Milia Milijovic. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. And if you think about her now, you can see it. Yeah. Um, I knew going in, but. Interesting. Yeah. So now she's an actor. She's an actress and model just like her mother was when she was young. They're starting her down that path. Oh, boy. I can't wait for Monster Hunter 10 where she's <laughs> taking over her mother's role. Yeah. Um, they gave Natasha uh, blue hair. Yeah. I guess to really like seed early that she liked to play around with her look. And yeah, I mean, and, and, and like the rebellious spirit. Exactly. And, and then it's, it's the 90s. That is we true. We were all doing crazy shit with our hair in the 90s. Well, I wasn't. Frosted tips. I, I didn't do frosted tips. Yeah, me neither. Fucking losers. Dude, everybody <laughs> did my age. Um, we all spiked our hair up and fucking... Did the mm. whole fucking NSYNC Backstreet Boys look? Sure. I liked the plane escape sequence. I thought it was fairly well done for a fairly low budget look. Like they didn't really go super big with it. Yeah. It was just like a little prop plane. But I thought they did a good enough job like making it interesting rather than just a stock, you know, thing. Yeah. Um and I I liked the reveal like of him tossing that gigantic like yeah. thing so that we like immediately go, Oh shit, he's a super soldier. Yeah. Even though if you saw the trailers you probably already yeah, knew. Yeah, we that. knew he was Red Guard <laughs> Red Guardian. Yeah, we know he's Red Guardian, but but I like that he was uh the first and only as far as we know, and as far as he knows, the only Soviet super soldier. Yeah. Um now I feel like they're starting to throw out more and more super soldiers. Yeah, in Captain this Marvel Man- Universe. Yeah, I was gonna say Captain America Winter or the Falcon Winter Soldier show had a lot of secret soldier sort of talk. Yes, we spent a lot of time with one particular one, but it w- it was hinted that there were a lot. Yes, yeah, there were several. So and like America sort of just forgot about them. Yeah. Sort of just push them aside, and, and a lot like what we do to our veterans. Yeah. Where we just push them aside and we just go, well, eh, fuck them. They did the same thing to Alexi. That's exactly what they did. They put him in jail. They put him in prison. That's what they did to, um, what's his name? Oh, did they? Yeah. He was in prison. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought they just, like, no. forgot about him. No, and, they put him in prison for, like, 30 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly what Russia did to Alexi. Was mm. they put him in prison. I mean, I guess they so used that tells him. me there was like a coordinated global effort then for all the super soldiers where they're just like, let's put them all in prison. Maybe, but you would during also During the think time that Cap was frozen. Yeah. I mean, obviously it was all during the time Cap was frozen. Yeah, so that he would be like the first one to awaken. Right. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I don't think so. I think it's more each place didn't know what to do with them once they outlived their usefulness. Yeah. You know? Oh, no, I don't, I don't mean that they did it. 
I don't mean they planned on him to be the first one. Oh. I'm just saying that happened to be the the events, but that's also not true because I think, I think the guy from Falcon Winter Soldier, was like was basically in his home for years as well. Yeah. But do you think he was? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all we know now is that yes, they are they are seeding that there are super soldiers everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just saying now anybody could pop up at any point and have been a super soldier. Sure. At some point in the past for some other country or for some nefarious organization or whatever. Uh, I'm just saying now they're they're really getting it out there. Yeah. So anybody could be. The sequence was fine. The only problem I have is there is no peril. Mm-hmm. Because not only do we know Natasha has to survive, but we know based on trailers and just logic that all of those characters have to survive because they all get together as adults. Yeah. Right? So none of them are going to die. Yeah. So there's no peril. And we know they have to get out. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> not, that's not the fault of the movie. That's the fault of trailers. Sure. Spoiling too much. Yeah. I mean, I guess so. But even so, we would still be able to figure that out. Yeah. I mean, I think I think then that for that scene, though, I think that, like, because it's a, it's a good scene. It's a fine scene, but maybe played a little too long. Yeah, maybe. Because they're trying to be like, look at like the perilous danger they're in. And maybe that's the thing is like, it, that's why like it gives you that feeling of like, eh, but like, come on, we already know that these characters, yeah, we know they're it, not. it's too long. If yeah. you shorten it, it's fine. We're just sure. like, okay, they're, they are, they're escaping, they're getting out, but we know they're going to live. So just get to the point and let's move on. Right. But instead they drag it out. They make this whole thing of like, oh, is she going to die? Is she not going to die? Because she got shot. And yeah, it's I know. Like, it's like, she got shot. She's not going to die. We saw but, the trailer. But she's okay. Yeah, it took. I looked Although, it up. It takes about three hours to fly from Ohio to Cuba. Oh, okay. So, I guess you can survive a gunshot oh, for you three hours. Yeah, you put pressure on it. I guess so. Yeah, sure. I, yeah. Just a flesh wound. Yeah. The, I, I mean, here's the thing though. Like Marvel has straight up lied in trailers before, sure, so it, it is. It could have been possible she died. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's possible, but, but there were there were too many scenes that she's no, in. Of course, like we knew. Yeah, they've done little things where they like they take the yeah. Hulk out of a scene because they're like, surprise, right. he's in the movie, and you're like, exactly. cool. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, no. Um, and then the only thing I want to talk about in the early part was the use of Don McLean's American Pie. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, like I knew as soon as they started playing it, mm-hmm. and Yelena started singing along. That this was going to be a callback. Of course. That was going to pay off at some point later. And it does. Um, But my question to you is, did they pick that song simply for the line, this will be the day that I die? Yeah, that and like America, American Pie. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But I, it just felt like, especially because she made so many comments about that would be an awesome way to die or this would be a terrible way to die. And then she also, it felt like she had resigned herself long ago that she was going to die doing this work, mm-hmm. right? Like as an adult, she had already decided she was going to die. So when she, at the end, when she decides she's going to take out the engine... Like, she fully expected she was dead when she did that. And she was making the sacrifice and doing what was supposed to be done. Yeah. Right? And I feel like it all comes back to that song. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Not great. I I, I also... I don't don't feel great about it. I don't feel that great about it. (laughs) Um, It's too cheesy. It's very cheesy. (laughs) Especially because in the moment when it's being called back and he's singing it to her Mm -hmm. and they're singing it together... And they literally say, this will be the day that I, and all of a sudden the lights outside come on. And I was just like, no, don't yeah, do that. Yeah, they were playing. They were I definitely know. playing with it. Don't do that. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing with her, like the self-sacrifice and all that, and it's like, okay, like, and it's supposed to be like, I don't know, I kind of I read into it too that like it was like she thought she was the sister that that would be like the first to die or whatever, and then it yeah. ends up being Natasha. Because yeah. we get that scene at the end where she's visiting sure. her grave and stuff, which it's also it's at the site of Natasha's mother's grave, because we saw the pink tree. So that was a nice little touch. Yeah, but here's I the assume, problem with that. I I, it's not. It has to be in Ohio. Because 
when Val is there, she says yeah, the something Midwest. about it being the Midwest. Yeah. So I think Yelena, now I think she probably did something similar to what Natasha's mother had, but that's where she chose to have her memorial. Mm, that sucks. Um, I like it less than. Yeah. Because that, that means someone took the time to try to replicate it. Yeah. Which I don't like. Yeah, Because that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Just fucking bury her with her mother. Well, she's not buried. There's no body. I know, but I mean, like, put the tomb. Like put the tomb. Ceremonially have it. Well, she might not have known where it was. And That's true. Nobody Drakoff's no, nowhere around to tell her where it is. Yeah. <laughs> so she probably went back to Ohio where they were, where they spent three years very happy together. Natasha was basically an American at that point. Yeah. So bury her in the Midwest. Um, my thought was it was interesting, though, because at first when she went to it, I thought it was going to be like, so it's like a secret place that only she knows about. But I don't think so. Like there was other shit there. Yeah, there was a bunch of like stuff. Like I, th- I think it was like a public memorial for Natasha. Yeah. Which is interesting. Sort of like I wonder if anybody questions why it's in Ohio. Or at least why it's in the Midwest. Well, all of her information got leaked in Winter Soldier. Yeah, they know she's from Russia. But I wonder if, if like, her American home maybe. was tagged as, like, Ohio. I mean, maybe, I guess. I'm I doing work for the film and the, f- I, and the I franchise. Have f- yeah, maybe. I don't know. I feel like the the KGB would not have allowed that stuff to even be, like, put down on paper. You know, like deep cover, stuff like that. True. I feel like they wouldn't have even had that stuff around. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I don't think so. I just, I just think it was interesting. Yeah, it's like strange. But I don't know. It, it's just a lot of, it's like a lot of neat, like, tying things up with a pretty little bow, but, like, none of it really makes sense, because you're kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, why is that in Ohio? And, like, why is, why is I everyone mean again, aware if, of it? If it's, if it's Yelena picking it, I get why it's Ohio. Yeah, but it wasn't her because there's other shit there. It looked like there were other graves there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like it looked like there were other things there. Yeah. So yeah, this isn't, I don't yeah. know. This it's weird. That's why I thought it was the mother's because it had the tree and then it had other graves. So yeah, I, was I like, know. Oh, that's but, okay. But that it was definitely neat. was not. Yeah. Now I'm like, like <laughs> what the fuck? Like even that makes less sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, another reason I'm upset. All right. <laughs> uh, and I do just want to throw out that um, as much as I, I mean, American Pie is fine, but I like Don McLean's Vincent much better. It's a better song. Okay. Uh, I just want to throw that out. There. I will call Kate Shortland up and ask her to do a director's cut. Where she you should replace that with uh, Vincent. Yeah. Then what song would have been better? What do you think would have been a good song for that moment? For them escaping and then having it called back? Hmm. I don't know. Born to Run? <laughs> okay. I mean, it's Springsteen? That's a little too on the nose, too. Run, run, Rudolph? No, see, I don't think you should do that. You should just have Ooh, something. if you had it set during Christmas and she was listening to Run, Run, Rudolph on the radio, mm-hmm. that would have been good. Yeah, I guess. It was also 1995. They could have gone with, like, something contemporary at that time, which they sort of did because they did that cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit in the opening credits. How did you feel about that? I did not like it. I, I figured you weren't going to like it. I was that. not a fan. Yeah. I thought um, it was weird, too. I was like, what is this? And then I realized what it was. I was like, oh, no. And I don't understand why, why it was there. That's sort of the movie thing is, like, taking pop songs and slowing them down and making but them, like, creepy. Remember they did it to the Pinocchio thing for I know, Avengers for Ultron. Ultron. <laughs> I know. I, I don't like it. I know. I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's very <laughs> weird. Yeah. Stop doing that. Uh, I just didn't understand why they picked that song. Yeah. It doesn't as make soon, sense. I, I'll be honest. Like as soon as it came on, I was kind of like, uh, uh, like, you know, I mean, there were people like laughing in the theater, and I think it was just supposed to be like a laugh moment for the fact that like the like little girl that was like her favorite song. You know, it's like the because she's like, can I you guess. put my song on or whatever? And yeah. They put it on, and like the parents kind of look at each other, and it's like it's supposed to be like played for like a small laugh of like, sure. oh, that's funny that this song is like this girl's little favorite right. song. But I laughed because like I was like, oh, this is like a dumb, this is a dumb choice for this. Yeah, I, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, you, you've you effectively cut, like, any tension. 
yeah. immediately by putting that song on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it, I agree. Yeah, it'd be like if she's like, put my song on, and they play like Barney or something, I'd be like, yeah, this is this is stupid. Like, you've, you've kind of ruined this yeah. scene. True. It should have been something else. They shouldn't have done a fucking song and a callback because it's just, it's a silly, it's a silly setup. It is. I mean, I agree with that, but yeah, who cares? Well, that's what they did. That's so. what they did. It's fine. Whatever. How'd you like all the butt shots in the movie? Well, since it was directed by a woman, I have no problems with it. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, I was like, shit. I was like, okay. But if this was a Justin Lin movie, <laughs> people would have been up in arms. I know. Which is funny because he's the least offender of like of the Fast and Furious. I mean, he's yeah. I mean, I agree with that. But he's also not Michael Bay. Yeah, he's not. He's he he like he pans through like what we would consider to be like that car culture yes. beach culture sort of right. stuff which like yeah you're going to see like little dancing you're going to see yeah. bikinis and stuff but like he pans pretty quick i mean yeah. he doesn't some linger of the other ones usually he doesn't use it sexually yeah i was going to say the first general. the first two like rob cohen and not rob cohen yeah, yeah rob, rob cohen and john singleton yeah they linger yeah in the first two movies and then i think like Seven has like a lingering scene because mm. Justin came in and did three, four, five, and six. Yes, and then seven and eight were done by other people, and then he came back. Yeah, for seven nine. was James Wan. Yeah, and then eight was like someone random. I think it was James Wan as well. Was it? I'm pretty sure he did two of them. Well, too much to look up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> we're lazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll just rely on my memory. I believe it was James Wan did both of those. Okay. Um, yeah. And again, it's comparing it to something like Michael Bay. Yeah. You know, where he hypersexualizes almost every woman. F. Gary Gray. Ah, damn it. That's right. They brought F. Gary Gray in. Son of a man. That The poor man's John Singleton. Yep. I like the outfits. Scarlett yeah. Johansson's beautiful. Of course. Uh, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Rachel Weisz, getting out there in age, but... Still beautiful. Still beautiful. Yeah. I and liked all the widows. And David Harbour, beautiful man. Beautiful man. Nah, he looks like shit in this movie on purpose, but... Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and I think there was... There wasn't enough of him. There wa- Well, uh, let me say this. There wasn't enough of all of them, like, together. Yeah. Yeah, the, like that that, w- that, that was, dynamic was few and far between. Yeah, it was really rushed. Like it was just that little yeah. scene with them at the at her house, and then like and then they all get taken to the sky sky castle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. Um, I think it was you know how is no one aware that that fucking that's castle what I'm saying, there? dude. How does it stay like unseen by eyes or by radar or by planes sword or by anything? Sword and shield. I know exactly what. Yeah. How? Does he have cloaking Or just technology? the Avengers in general. Like, doesn't Tony have, like, a fucking... He has the orbital satellite yeah. system all over the place. He's, it's like, aware of everything system. that's going on. I don't know. How are, are, are Ross and them okay with it? I don't know. They're Again, too busy with the Sokovia Accords. I'm like, meanwhile, you got motherfucker in Sky Castles over here. Yeah, running assassin schools. Weird. I agree. That was That was a bizarre... But it, it but it had to be right because we otherwise we would question like well, where is this yeah where has he been where has this been on Earth the whole time although and why, and why I don't didn't know. anybody does take that care make of it, it better no but like why <laughs> but like why didn't anybody take care of it on Earth they're like well, because it was not Earth hold on shouldn't it have been on the moon wouldn't that have tied into that's Moonraker what, better I know and that's why I keep saying I'm like I'm like that's what <laughs> that's what would have made it Fast and Furious even better is if they went to the moon <laughs> sure. like we we need to get to the moon people yeah. This needs to happen in movies again. I mean, uh, we'll get there eventually. I think, I honestly, I think Fast 10, we're going to get there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think she's setting, I think, not a Fast 10 discussion. This is a Black no, Widow discussion. that's right. This is Black Widow, buddy. In general, yes, I felt like, how did you feel about Red Guardian? Um, I thought he was just kind of like a stupid, like, yeah. like, a, like almost like a mock of a, yeah, he was. He's like a mockery. Like, yes. Yeah. I, I agree. Now I'm trying to figure you out. Know what, you know what he felt like to me? He felt like less of a superhero and more of like a wrestler. Yes. A past his prime wrestler. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Now, I think that was by design. I mean, everything is by design, obviously. It's a movie. There are no coincidences. But I feel like Q- they made Q- a Q- deliberate Q- choice <laughs> to do that. 
to provide him as comic relief, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. that's sort of what he was for most of this runtime. Um, but because you can see the clear distinction between him at the beginning when he was coming back from being undercover and seemed to have his wits about him, seemed to like really be focused and want to get back into it, yeah. working in the field, and then where he was after he'd been in jail for like 20 years. Yeah. Right? Um, and and I, I just I feel like it had like beaten him down. I still don't understand how did they hold him there. That made no sense to me. I mean, sh- like the government ha- and the S.H.I.E.L.D. have the raft. Yeah. Like to, to make it the so it's almost that, impossible. That's the only thing I can think of is that like if he broke out, where are you going to go? You're going to die of like frostbite hypothermia like i guess that, that's the only thing i can think of because i was thinking the same thing i was like that he punched through that fucking glass and just well pulled yeah that i mean dude it was like, obvious to show i don't know it was it was to show that like and the same with the whole arm wrestling yeah. with like all the guys it was to show that like he's not really a prisoner here it's almost like he's just kind of living here by choice he's, he's a prisoner like a self-imposed prisoner yeah it's sort of it's to show that like he's kind of given up on life and he's just like yeah. eh, whatever I'll just hang out here and like have fun get some tattoos fuck around with some of the inmates arm yeah. wrestle whatever sure yeah but like that it just I don't know like the but then the call to action is so quick and swift for him right. it doesn't make sense right. I I would have expected more resistance of him being like. No, I don't. I don't want to, you know, go on this mission with you guys or like. Yeah, if he had resigned himself to that, he wouldn't immediately jump at the chance right. and make it seem like I've been waiting for someone to come break me out. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, just break yourself out. Break yourself out and go find them. I mean, number one, why did they put him in prison? Why didn't they just kill him? Yeah. No, like, I don't know. that makes no sense to me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I I don't get it. Um, but here's another question for you: Where exactly did they get that Red Guardian action figure that they sent him? Are they just like on store shelves? Do people still make those? Like, where did that come from? Did the dude that procures everything is that one of the things they made him find Maybe. so that they could do that? Maybe. I mean, you're asking <laughs> now. You're asking a a Batman torches the bridge with his symbol question. I yeah, well, I do have questions about. Yeah, that. I like, don't know why they <laughs> why they take the time to do things in snarky little comedic ways. Yeah, but they do. I said, did the guy who procured the chopper have to find that thing too? That dude has a tough job, and he never even gets to sleep with Natasha, even though he wants to. Yeah. So the only comment I really kind of have about this movie actually has to do with his character. He is the he is supposed to be the portrayal of this is the way a non-toxic male friend is supposed to behave sure. around women. Sure. This is what a male and female relationship can look like. Yes. Not everything needs to be toxic and sexual is the message that they're trying to get across. The message I see is that she is toxic because like she's man- it's manipulative. It's yeah. like you're making this, well, you're making this little cuck simp do all this shit for you yeah and it's like and then you well, friends again, him in his ass you're, i mean you're paying him he's doing a job he's not doing it out of the goodness of his heart there's a difference that that's not being was she paying him yeah because he said this is what when he found that when he got the quinjet at the yeah. end he said this is what i can do when you give me time and money so where was she getting the money from i don't know i'm sure she has like tons of money somewhere Hmm. Lockdown accounts, something. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, thought, I can't imagine she wouldn't have like gotten money. I thought he was year just, after year. He was just getting her stuff because he wanted no. to, or because they were friends. No, I think like she, he was getting paid to do it. Hmm. Like that's the only way he could have. I don't think he would have bought a Quinjet out of his own pocket. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, I mean that part. Like yeah. That part I thought was him saying like yeah like was like saying this is what I can get with now with time yes and money. finding the trailer and stuff like that yes he might have done that for her just as a friendship thing yeah because she was coming out of a bad situation you know she was on the run he knew she might not be available and then yes I guess potentially you could say the chopper 
and that's why it was so shitty. Yeah, was that he was able to that's, get it. That's what I thought it was. I thought I thought all that stuff was was out of friendship because sure, it, that's why it was all crap. But then like at the end, it was like this is what I can do when you sure when you actually like provide something. Sure, sure, yeah. So yeah, that's possible. But it it definitely implies that their relationship prior to what we saw has been a professional one in which he gets paid to find things for her mm-hmm. and for anybody. He works for anyone, not just her. Yeah. Right? So I don't see it necessarily as manipulative other than there's no way she hasn't picked up on the fact that he likes her. Right. And that's where it gets into the... That's what I mean by, by the yeah. manipulative. It's like it's like that emotionally manipulative sort of thing. Of I like, guess. Of like... like because there's always the there, there, there's always the thing of like okay this guy this guy clearly likes you, he's probably even asked her out. I mean he Maybe. seemed he seemed forward enough because he makes the comment where right. he's like he's like ah oh, he's like just whatever guy likes to hear. Maybe so like it, it sounds like he's forward enough to to express that like there's some desire beyond friendship right? right. But then you always get that same sort of excuse of like well, like yeah but that's not my fault like that's not my fault that like he likes me more than a friend right. like i you know we're just friends and it's like no 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 but you're you're misunderstanding it is now your responsibility to sever that tie sure and i know that that's hard when a person is giving you things for free and and well, being like i mean sure i'm just talking, like not so much this movie i'm talking yeah. beyond this movie now like beyond yeah. you know like yeah. the 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 real life sort of scenario sure, of how this sure. all kind of happens but like women always play it like it's not their fault that like the man, that the that they should be able to have like a friend relationship. And I'm like, you know, I agree. Like you, you can have that. Yeah. But that's not what this is. So it's it's your responsibility yeah. to cut them loose and be like, all right, well, if 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 you want more than a friend out of me, I can't give you that. So I don't think it would be really appropriate for us to continue doing what we're doing, which is me getting things from you for free sure <laughs> that's the like that's the toxic Maybe. part of the of the we manipulation don't we don't know what their history is we, we don't, don't know if yeah. they've had a conversation we don't know you know like we don't know we do know however that scarlett johansson not scarlett johansson, that, that natasha romanoff throughout these all of these films has been a little bit of a a little bit of a here and dabbling here and there, a little tease of like, do I like Hawkeye? Do I like Hulk? Do I like Cap? She just kind of gets mm. tossed around enough to where like even like they even make comments in interviews where they're like, where like I remember like Chris Evans makes like a comment one of them where he's just like, yeah, she's just like fucking, she's with everybody like sure, but but it's it's more of him making a statement of like they don't know how to write her character like they don't right. they don't know who to give her to, yeah, and I'm like don't give her to anybody yeah she doesn't have to be with someone yeah. <laughs> Simple. Yeah, I I agree. I don't know. It was just it, that this that relationship in this movie was strange because I felt like they were trying to say something. Yeah. But I don't know what what they were trying to say. Be- beyond the fact that I think that what they were trying to say is that this is how a non toxic male friend should be. Like this is this is sure. the portrayal of that. Sure. And I'm like, eh, but like, he still liked her. Yeah. So it's like it's not really like platonic friendship. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It was weird. I guess so. I just have her. Just have her pay him and get good shit. Like, why? Why go through the whole rigmarole? Or, 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 like, why even have him be interested in her at all? Don't even have that line in there. Just have someone who. Per- you know what? Have a woman. Yeah, it's all women in this movie. Just have another woman that yeah, procures things for her for sure. Yeah, they could. Problem solved. They chose not to. I know. So some of the things that we already talked about even though for different reasons, we knew who Taskmaster was going to end up being, mm. right? So we already, like, they're telegraphing stuff to us ahead of time. Um, there were a couple other things that they telegraphed fairly early on. Mm. When they arrived at Melina's farm, and she welcomed him in, and she went to her pantry, and she opened her, like, secret door to put her gun away, and you see her arsenal, and you see up on the shelf... The two masks. The two masks. Yeah. And I immediately saw them and I went, oh, they're going to do a mask thing in this one. Yeah. Which makes sense. It's Black Widow. Of course. Um, and so I was not surprised. Yeah. You know, I, I knew what was going to happen. As soon as, as soon as they see Natasha laying on the ground, I immediately said, oh, they switched. In my head. I was like, they switched. 
So it wasn't like a reveal when he taps it and he pulls the face off. Yeah. I knew it was going to be her. Um, and then the same thing when he mentioned the pheromones. Mm-hmm. I knew she had to stop her sense of smell. Yeah, and I and I also I knew she was playing the whole time yeah. because we we've seen her do that before, where yes. she was like in the chair, you know, yeah, pretending to be like helpless, or whatever. And I was like, oh, she's pretending again. She's getting as much information as possible. He's gonna reveal a little too much, and then she's gonna go, bingo, thanks, like yeah. some snarky little comment, or whatever. She did, and then she broke her own fucking nose, which was wild. But like right, <laughs> like as soon as he said the pheromone thing, mm-hmm. like in my head, I was like, oh, okay, so they've got to. She's got to not be able to smell. And, like, literally, like, moments later, she starts baiting him into beating her in the face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, so she's trying to get him to break her nose. That's basically what she's doing. Yeah, and then she even makes the comment of, like, you you couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, telegraphed it. We do think, obviously, we feel like Dracoff is actually dead now. He was on a thing that blew up, and his glasses flew yeah, his glasses, <laughs> uh, yeah, Dolby 3D style flew like towards the camera. Straight at us and then across. <laughs> um, I mean, a giant fireball ate him up, so yeah, I, I assume he's... Yeah, I assume he's dead. That means the Red Room is gone. Yeah, it, right? but the problem is the movie The movie has laid out one crucial line that, Mo- that uh, not Molina, uh, Yelena kept saying, mm-hmm. which was, did you see the body? Right. It's possible he's not gone. It's Marvel. It's Marvel. We didn't see a body. He may not be dead. Yeah. Um, but Yelena is now tasked with going out and finding all of the Black Widow operatives out there. Yeah. And releasing them from their mind control. Yeah. By having Melina synthesize the stuff, the gas thing, so that they can make more of it. Yeah, and I assume she's she is basically going to be the leader of all those other widows that have woken up because they all look like they're aimless and lost, and they yeah, need, they need a leader. Exactly. I think she's going to step up and do that, and Probably. she's going to lead a new widow team to do all this stuff. So, does really anything end? No, of course not. Are you well. crazy? So it's like now. the the red room has just shifted its allegiance to a woman who hopefully Correct. is a kind woman. Exactly. But. We don't know. We don't know. And sometimes you get to a point where an end justifies a mean, and you start to do things that might be morally questionable. Yeah. Especially when you start teaming up with Val. Exactly. Well, yeah, we got to talk about that. Like, uh, we don't know because all we see is her talk to Val, mm. and she, Val seems to be her handler. Yeah. And she's she was on personal time or vacation or whatever. Um. But this is after the events of Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Mm because that was only like six months after. You mean Civil War? No, the end credit sequence, like the post credit sequence. Yeah. That was after Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you said Winter Soldier. Oh, sorry. No, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is after. Oh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. You say okay because you say Captain America the Winter Soldier. I think about the original Captain America. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yes. Because, so she has already recruited U.S. agent before at this point in time. So U.S. agent is already working for her. So now U.S. agent is working for her. Yelena is working for her. Yeah. And I'm sure someone somewhere else that we haven't seen yet is working for her. Yeah. And their target for her now is to go kill Clint. Yes. Which will obviously lead straight into the Hawkeye series for Disney+. Plus. trying to think of other people that she could be recruiting. Um, Who was the guy in Doctor Strange that got away? Oh, um, the guy's name it wasn't Malachi, was it? That doesn't sound right. Uh, I don't Malachi? remember what his name was. Yeah, it was the Chibatology of Four yeah. character. Well, she recruits him. Maybe she's like I mean, forming all the little like villains. I mean, he was basically like no more magicians. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe she, like she's gathering people that are in different realms of like, yeah, you know, types of things. And he would be the one to go after Dr. Strange and all of them. Yeah. I mean, she's, she is the, like, yeah, she's like the anti Avengers. Yeah. She is the anti, um, Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, but, but see that implies that Yelena's bad. 
it it implies that she's she's lost like she yeah. yeah she it's not that she's bad it's that she's she's being manipulated once again sure but that's that's what i'm saying is like at the end of this movie mm-hmm. before that post credit sequence she has a purpose yeah and she has been shown a good way to be so we are then to Im- infer that she has either been drawn away from that purpose or she completed her purpose and was again adrift. So here's what happened during that time. Okay. The blip. The blip, sure. Could have fucked things up for that her. That is true. Could have fucked things up. Yeah. So she went the way that Sharon went. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. It's true. Yeah, and then and then just the obvious revenge, get revenge on the person who killed my Sure. My sister. Which, you know, as we go along, she'll find out he didn't actually do that. He right. tried to stop it. He tried to sacrifice himself. And that really that was like, the No, 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 you don't understand. Like, like the way that I, the way I tried to sacrifice myself, you should have been there. Yeah. It was goofy. It was goofy as hell. It was a sacrifice off between the two of us. Yeah. Which one wanted to kill themselves more. Yeah. And it was Natasha. My other question is, Natasha is standing in that field waiting for Thunderbolt Ross to show up. Yeah. And then we don't get to see an interaction at all. But we see two weeks later, she's riding on a motorcycle. She's got her Infinity War hair. And she's getting in a Quinjet to go break some people out of the raft. Are we to believe that she talked her way out of it? Are we to believe that based on what she did with the Red Room and all of that, that they said, okay, slate's clean, and then she went and became a fugitive again by breaking people out? I mean, she I'm, was on the run from them. I'm to believe that the when the camera cut, she like made a run for it. I don't think so. And like got away, slipped away. I mean, maybe, but... Because she's crafty. Here's another question for you. Why did Thunderbolt Ross and any of his people not fly there? Why are they in a, like a car fucking caravan? Caravan. I don't know. I mean, and it took a long time for them to even... Yeah, they had to drive across the Atlantic Ocean. (sighs) (laughs) I'm just like, Why? Why would you not fly there? I don't know. I don't, know. I, I don't understand. I don't know, man. They drive everywhere. Maybe it's like John Madden. He's afraid of flying. He drives everywhere. Yeah, a lot of, lot of like just like little choices of like things where you're like, like I don't, I don't understand how we got from point A to point B. Yeah. But. Yeah. I don't know. It was fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. I think that's all I got. How'd yeah. you feel about the jokes of like, why do you land like that and flip your hair up? And um, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. You know, but I know that the masses probably enjoy it. Did you like the they get to feel like they're in on the joke? Yeah. Did you like the vest? The reveal that that's where she got the vest? No. No, well, you didn't love that. I didn't. I didn't care for that really. Okay. Um, I, I will be honest with you. I didn't pay attention that she even had a vest. Yeah. In future time at all. Yeah. So to I me, I only know because people like when that trailer came out, people were like, "Oh, look at that like weird vest or weird outfit she has on." No, I never, I never even noticed yeah. it. I just thought like I so to me, comedy. it felt like more of a Yelena joke than anything else. I mean, it, yeah, it was. And that she was giving it to her out of sisterly camaraderie. Not as a, oh, that's how she got it. That, that, yeah, that was my takeaway. She gave it to her. I, I thought the like, well, I thought the weirdest part is when she gave her the vest. She also gave her like the little golden dice as well, and I was like, that that's weird. Yeah, but those golden dice have been there since the beginning. You just never noticed it. Yeah, I guess that's true. They were always hanging off of her, off her belt. 
Yeah, exactly. Every time there's an ass shot, there's a little dice right there. But exactly. I thought that was weird. I don't know. But that's where it, she got it. It's like her mistletoe. Yeah. <laughs> what do you kiss? Whatever you want. Wherever it's hanging. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Let <laughs> me get a uh, mistletoe belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> you really uh, Leanne's gonna hate that joke. <laughs> she did not like it when I did the finger thing in the last one. <laughs> uh, I like this. She was like, "This is why I can't recommend this to my friends." Good. And I was like, "What? Your friends are fine. They're cool people. They 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 no, didn't laugh. We don't, we don't need people we know watching these and listening to this. Yeah, not at all." Right. I want a job still. I don't want people <laughs> at my true. work to find it. That's true. Would you, Blake, recommend Black Widow? No. Okay. Okay. No, I, like, if you're a Marvel fan, you're going to go see it, so it doesn't matter what I say. But if you're a person who, like, is doesn't really care about Marvel movies, but, like, wants to go see a good movie, you've seen this. Yeah. You've seen this. You'll be able to guess everything sure. pretty easily. The action's like... Here's the thing. like The action, to, for me, was was just okay. There was so much CG in the action. Sure. Stuff that like I don't even think should have been CG. Maybe. That I'm like, if you just had like a, a better, more acrobatic person, you could have pulled that off. But it was straight up CG. And I'm like, that's weird. Like Hand-to-hand combat should not be... Computer I graphics. I mean, I agree with that. But man, then the credits, the list of the fucking visual effects people. I'm like, I know. You would think that you just got done watching Endgame. I know. It was a lot. But I'm like, it's just a spy movie. Like, what was all the visual effects? Yeah. And you're like, oh, no. Like, but when you're watching it, you go, oh, wow. It's like almost every time Taskmaster's fighting, he's like kind of rubbery. Sure. There's a lot of that in, in some hand-to-hand scenes. I think that's why it's close up. Could be. Is to hide some of that. Um, of course, all the Sky Castle stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a ton of that. Then there was like you know them falling through the sky, yeah, the whole ending like thing. Yeah, yeah. But I thought that was pretty well done. Yeah, it I was. Mean, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, I think my only other note about that sequence was, you know, Yelena thought she was sacrificing herself by blowing up the thing. She got blown off. Natasha was not going to let her die. Of course. Grabbed that fucking parachute, jumped after her, put the parachute on her, pulled it. When Taskmaster was coming, pulled it, and then jumped off so Taskmaster would chase her. And then I was sitting there thinking the entire time, I was like, how is that parachute not going to get hit by falling debris? Oh, I know. And how is she not going to fucking fall to her death anyway? Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, she was fine. But she was also passed out. She was passed out, exactly. So my thought was, too, like, if she survives all of that debris as she's falling, she's going to land on the ground, and then all that shit's going to fall on her. Yeah. And it did. It, it fell around her. I know. But like, it was like all around her in the perfect All yeah. around her. But I was like, oh, yeah, there she is in the middle of like all this rubble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you it's, know, guys, it's, it's a movie. Fine. It's a Marvel movie, guys. Marvel Come movie. on. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, like my personal my personal stuff is like, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. But you're going to go see it, so. Yeah. It doesn't mean, matter what I say. I, I would, I recommend it to Marvel completionists. Yeah, like you have to. You're gonna watch every Marvel movie. You might as well watch it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it really matters if you if you're not into Marvel. I don't think if you're not into Marvel, you're gonna see this movie anyway. I don't think there are that many people. I don't. Like, yeah, I don't think people see Marvel movies. That, that exactly. Are. I think the people that go see Marvel movies go see the Marvel movies. Yeah. Uh, although I have seen like some of them just watch like one here, one there. Uh, and it's the, weird. Actually, in the theater as we yeah. were leaving, that girl said that she didn't know she died because she hasn't seen Endgame. It's so weird. I mean, it, it is weird, but it's like with these standalone movies especially, I think people just like look at them and they go, oh, cool, like yeah. a kung fu movie. I'm going to go see that. And sure. they know it's Marvel, and they're like, yeah, I'm sure it's connected, but it looks like it's a standalone thing, so I should be fine. Yeah. So they see Black Widow, and they're just like, ah, Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow. They're like, okay, I'll go see it. Like It's a standalone adventure. Yeah, and I guess it also could be, like, people that get dragged there on a date. Sure. You know? Like, they're just like, I, my, my boyfriend or my girlfriend really wants to go see this movie. I, I don't really watch those movies, but I'll go with her. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, even, even as, like, a Marvel fan, like, I just, 
I mean, the whole, I don't know. The movie was, I mean, we talked about it. The movie is un- completely unnecessary. Yeah. Didn't need to be made. It was honestly too little, it's too, too late. too little, too late. It should have been done five years ago. Yeah, it should have been done like seven or eight years. It should have been done like should have been done were, prior to Civil War. Yeah, like when they were doing the first of everyone's sort of movies. Yes, they should have. So yes, this is where they've they fucked up. Yeah. Okay. They introduce her in Iron Man two. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yes, I understand if they're not, they didn't have plans to really use her that much, in Phase one, even into Phase two. Yeah. It wasn't until the Avengers movie that they started to gather that a lot of people liked her character and liked her in it. Yeah. So then they start saying, okay, well, we got to do something with Scarlet. But by then, you're already ramped up on all these other movies that you have going. And so you're starting to think, okay, how can we do a Scarlet movie? How's that going to work? Where is it going to be? Yeah. You know? And so they start to miss windows where they could have done it. But see, yeah, so, like, they, they missed their opportunity to do, like, a stand, to do this standalone movie. I mean, it would have been different than this, but yeah. it would, you know, to do her standalone movie. But we, I think what bothers me so much about this is that, like, we we got her, we got her whole story, we got her arc, which is yes. the most important part. Yeah. We also got the spy movie in Winter Soldier. True. And it's great. Like, she's yeah. great in that. She and she's is. literally, like, one of the leads. So my whole thing is like from from Iron Man two, to Avengers to Winter Soldier to fucking Civil War, to Infinity War to Endgame to you know all the movies that she's in, we get her entire story. Yeah. We get her character arc, her emotional arc. Yeah. All the way up to her self sacrifice. Going back and doing this movie. It's like it feels like you took like a franchise that was complete and decided like we're going to like it'd be like if they had the alien franchise and you got like all four alien movies Mm -hmm. and then they went back and they go check this one out ripley and you're like no no we already see that she's a fucking badass sure we already know like everything she's accomplished look at all these accomplishments we don't need another shitty smaller side hustle Sure. That, like, actually lowers the status of her character by being like, look at this crazy thing she did. And I'm like, I watched her fight fucking gods and shit. Like, yeah. she's already done the best. Sure. She sacrificed herself to get a soul stone. Like, she's she she's good. We're yeah. good. I mean, I agree. But they're like, no, no, no. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. She's in a movie with all brainwashed females where all she does is free them from being brainwashed. I mean, obviously, (laughs) it's because they waited so long that they couldn't go back and give her a proper origin story, which is what they probably wanted to do. But they didn't need to because we got her. I understand that. We got her origins in. But they wanted to go in depth. Because that was a cursory origin. It was cursory, but it was enough. It was it enough, was to enough under, for, for us to everyone understand. understand. Sure, of yeah. course. But a lot of people, and this is just the way it is, a lot of people, they're not, they want more. Well, you got it. Uh, yeah, you got it, but not necessarily what you wanted. <laughs> yeah. But that's because they waited too long. They couldn't do the origin story anymore. She I, couldn't play young. I just don't, I, I don't think it would have been good even if they did do it, because I think it, it would have been the same... I mean, I definitely there would be definitely people who liked it. Yeah, Marvel has a very like built-in bias where like it's hard to dislike anything that Marvel does. Sure, but it would have just been a straight-up Red Sparrow. Like it would have been a, yeah. a classic Russian woman, you know, femme fatale spy sort of story. Sure, and like we already got that. We got that numerous times with her. Yeah, but let me show. Let me throw this out. This is what they should have done. Yeah. Not that origin. Not not the the Red Room origin. That we got. Budapest. Yeah. They could have spent the whole movie telling that story. Yeah. We like the lead up to it, why it's going to be the thing that gets her into shield. Like that was the mission that got her into shield. It, it, yes, her origin should have been the change from 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 Russian spy exactly. to to worthy of Nick Fury's attention. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it should have been. Yeah. That is what this should have been. And they could have done that now. They didn't have to do this one. They could have done that. True. Her and Jeremy Renner. Yeah. 
and honestly, their de aging technology, whatever, if they wanted, if to. if they needed to, but they really don't. They really we would have bought it. I would have bought it. We would have bought it. Really. Again, she's fucking beautiful. Like I would, I would buy yeah. into it. Now Jeremy Renner, looking like a catcher's mitt now, but <laughs> he, he looks <laughs> fine, dude. He looks fine, but if you threw a little de aging on him, yeah, I, just, I wouldn't just be a, upset. A smidge. Yeah, just a little, just a little, <laughs> little pepper. Um, but. And then they would have had to, at that point, introduce, but here's the problem. They were thinking forward, right? This is the end of Natasha's story, but we have more Black Widow stories to tell. So you'd have to introduce someone. That's another, yeah, because, like, yes, it, it's, I mean, it's all business. Right? It's yeah. a machine. It's all moving, and it's going, and it's moving forward. Yeah. It's another reason this doesn't feel quite right. Yeah. Why, again, it, it hits that too little too late because it also feels disrespectful is a loaded word. It, it's not that it's disrespectful. It's that there is a hint of like, here's your movie, but it's really to to push f- these other things it's forward. It's to set something else it's up. It's to set pieces for other for our other properties that yes. we uh, we have more faith in because these characters haven't run up their contracts yet. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a cynical way to look at it, but that is the reality. I mean, yeah, yes. that's Hollywood. I mean, like, yeah, it is. Anyone who thinks that like these things aren't driven by money, any decision they make isn't driven by money. Yeah, you're kidding yourself. Of course. That's what also what I tell people like when you talk about the wokes, the all the woke culture, or whatever. Yeah. Trust me, no one in Hollywood is woke. <laughs> no one is. They are all doing. They are all doing this for money. Yeah. So when they do hashtag blm and they do hashtag whatever they are just capitalizing on the moment yeah and like yes that is fucking cynical that is a terrible way to look at the world but that's marketing baby that's the way it works yeah and that's all they care about that's true if they didn't you would have seen more movies being pushed out during covid but instead they were like nah baby we're looking at this hold them all back yeah figure out other ways to make money speaking of which we're done with Black Widow. I don't recommend it. You recommend it? Sure. I think it's fine. Fine. It's fine. I recommend it for Marvel fans. Yeah, of course. You're going to watch it. Yeah, doesn't matter. Hey, guys. If you like that video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. Uh, If you have any uh, recommendations for movies, anime, TV shows that you'd like us to react to or review, leave a comment on any of our videos, or you can actually tweet at us, at Blake and Jeff, and make sure you uh, look for our podcast. Wherever you find podcasts, search Blake and Jeff, you'll find the podcast that we do here on the channel. And if you stay here on the channel, you'll find the video version as well. Uh, We'll see you guys in the next one.